All right, here we go. We are live and direct. Salute to Knicks Nation. Let me get my theme music going here. Salute to Knicks Nation, man. CP the Franchise here on the Bleacher Report app today, Wednesday, April 10th. Another Knicks Fan TV Bleacher Report session, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Hit the like button. Hit the fire emoji on the Bleacher Report app and share this video, man. The Franchise on Bleacher Report. We are back at it, and uh, a lot to talk about, man. We got to tap in with those New York Knicks because the New York Knicks sitting in the third seed in the Eastern Conference at 37-32 and 32 with three more games remaining in the season. We got to talk about it, man. On today's show, we are going to talk about the potential playoff matchups for the Knicks today. If the season were to end today, we got to talk about who they would face and who they could face once the season wraps up this week, man. The final countdown. So let's lock in, hit that like button, hit the fire emoji, and share this video. All right, man. Salute to everybody in the chat. Let's get it going. CP the franchise here. Uh, Knicks coming off of a big, big 128 to 117 win over the Chicago Bulls last night. Big win by the Knicks. And uh, just a great job once again by Jalen Brunson. Captain Clutch, Jalen Brunson continues to deliver for this team in the nick of time. No pun intended, but in the nick of time. And a 45 point stellar, 45 point outing. What's the difference here? And Chicago just had no answers for him. He was cooking everybody from Caruso to Javante Green. Anybody could get it. And Jalen Brunson is leaving defenders in his wake. And I mean, Caruso's an old NBA defense. Caruso is all NBA defense. And Jalen Brunson still was unbothered. Becoming the third Nick in Nick's history with 10 plus 40 point games in a season. He now trails Patrick Ewing, who has 11, and Bernard King, who sits at the top. So Jalen Brunson, the legend of Brunson, continues to grow and develop in front of our eyes. Salute to Jets, Mets, Knicks, 89 in the chat. Salute to Marcos, Roman, 47 in the chat as well. And, uh, yeah, man, we, we are live and direct. Salute to Gamba in the chat as well. Okay, so with Brunson here leading the way, the Knicks are sitting in the third seed in the East, three games remaining. They're just one game shy of the Milwaukee Bucks for second. One game shy of the Milwaukee Bucks for second, who just lost Giannis to an apparent calf injury, non-contact, MRIs come back clean. But what will the Bucks do to finish out the season? Because their schedule is quite formidable. They have to face Orlando twice. One home, one on the road. But in between that, which is kind of weird in the schedule, they got to go to OKC and finish that off. So their schedule gets a little bit tricky because OKC still has a lot to play for. So they're going to be facing an Oklahoma City team that is uh, motivated to try to get the number one seed in the West if they can. So that could bode well for the Knicks should they handle business, and I believe with Jalen Brunson at the helm, they just, they could. They have to play the Celtics on Thursday, and then home against Brooklyn. Brooklyn's already on uh, Cancun time, so Brooklyn, forget them. And then they finish off against the, uh, the Chicago Bulls. So I like the Knicks' chances here at potentially even getting the two seed. What do you guys think in the chat? I like the Knicks' chances here, man. So to everybody in the chat, let me just make sure my uh, my audio and video is clear. Just make sure that we have a consistent connection. So the Knicks schedule I just gave, we look at Orlando's schedule. Orlando, who sits uh, a, ga- a half game back of the Knicks, a half game back of the Knicks, who sit in the fourth seed, and we take a look at their schedule here. Orlando has to face Milwaukee twice, like we said. 
that. And then Philadelphia in between, facing a hot Sixers team. Sixers winning six in a row. So that's Orlando's schedule. If we look at Cleveland, Cleveland, who's sitting one game back of the Knicks, they now finish with a pretty light, um, a pretty light home schedule. They had to go out west and figure things out out west. It got a little tough for them. But now they face Memphis tonight. Then home against Indiana, big game there, and then home against Charlotte Hornets. Charlotte Hornets are in Cancun as well. So that's uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers' remaining schedule. So let's not count them out in terms of, hey, even the two seed. Who knows? This thing is going to get between two and six. We have no idea what is going to happen here. Even seven if you want to count Philly. And then you look at the Pacers. Pacers won three straight. They just beat the Raptors. Now, of the remaining teams, they're the only one with two games left. They play Cleveland, and they play Atlanta to wrap it up. In Cleveland, home against the Hawks. Marcos Roman says, as long as we stay two or three seed, we'll be good. We'll leave Boston for the Eastern Conference Finals. That's what you're going to need. If you want to see Boston in the Eastern Conference Finals, you have to first get either the two seed or the three seed. And then take care of business in the first and second round. Not easy, but I hear you, Marco. I definitely hear you. So with that being said, let's go into some of these potential matchups here. Because right now, if the playoffs were to start today, if the season ended today and and we're talking playoffs, the next first round opponent would be the Indiana Pacers. Indiana Pacers, who beat the Knicks three games to one in the regular season, currently sitting in the sixth seed. And this one's a little bit tricky because they really didn't see the Knicks in terms of the team that they are now or even during the course of the season. OG Ananobi hasn't played the Pacers in a Knicks uniform. So this is a completely different team. There was one game where Jalen Brunson had missed. Against uh, against the Pacers there. So, you know, I don't think you can really take away much from uh, the regular season series because neither team has really seen the other at its best. And this is not even this next team at its best because, you know, you have no Julius Randle. So it's hard to get a real feel for how these teams will match up against each other. But there are some things that you, you, can, you can take away from their seasons as a whole. Pacers, number two offense in the NBA right now, number 24 defensively. And I think what's been impressive about them is that they've been able to maintain their offensive positioning even with Tyrese Halliburton kind of having a, an up-and-down second half. First half, hey, he was a star. All the talk was about Halliburton in the first half. He was a star. The playing tournament, all of that. But he's kind of come back to the pack a little bit. Nevertheless, the Pacers offense still has maintained their edge. They've won three straight. Their pace is what concerns me in terms of how did the Knicks keep up if the Pacers are on their A game, can the Knicks match firepower? I think that is where things can get tricky if they try to get out and track meet against this team. This won't be an easy series. We talked about it last night in the show on uh, on Knicks Fan TV. How will these two teams match up? I don't see how this thing doesn't go six games. Just because of the pace at which the Pacers play, and their high-octane offense. You got T.J. McConnell playing well off the bench. Deuce McBride, that'll be his primary concern. I think Deuce can handle that matchup. How do the Knicks handle the Pacers' athleticism? Sometimes they can get a little overmatched. Obi, our friend Obi, has been playing well for the Pacers as of late. So who takes on that assignment off the bench? His ability to run the floor, spread the floor, and be a highlight reel. You know he'd like to get that East Bay bunk dunk back in front of his hometown fans and family. But I'm going to give the Knicks, obviously, the size and the strength 
advantage, the size and the physicality. That is what I think will overall wear this Pacer team down. The OG factor. I think he can take away both Siakam and Halliburton at different spurts over the course of a series, depending on what this Knicks team needs. But this Knicks team is going to have to show up defensively. And on the offensive end, Brunson's going to get his. I don't see anybody in the paces being able to get in front of him. Yeah, Nebhard is going to try his best to be a pest. But ultimately, I think he's going to get his ass cooked. But for the Knicks, it's going to be very important to play sound and smart. Limit the turnovers. The Knicks have got to limit the turnovers here against a Pacer team that loves to get out and transition, one of the best transition teams in the league all year. You can't give them any easy opportunities. you got to keep them in the half court. So for the Knicks, they've got to play a steady and focused game because you don't want to give this Pacer team any easy opportunities to rack up buckets because they can do that easily. They can do that easily. So to everybody in the chat, once again, CP the Franchise here on the Bleacher Report app. So I like our chances. I think Brunson will be able to do his thing. Pacers defense, that, that should be that should be light work for the Knicks to be able to handle. They should be fine there. And they also give up their fair, fast break points. So for the Knicks... I would look to capitalize on the Pacers' inability to rebound effectively. Get out and run, Josh Hart. Get out and run, Brunson. Play fast. Play fast when you have the opportunity to because the Pacers' fast break defense can be had. And like I said, they can be had on the boards. And inside the paint is where the Knicks should be able to thrive. And so the Pacers 30th in the league right now in terms of defending points in the paint. That's based on their defense, based on their principles. They're a team that's going to want to run you off the three-point line, but they leave the paint wide open. So Brunson should have his opportunities there. Josh Hart, Isaiah Hartenstein. You know, Knicks should have their opportunities here to get what they want inside. And if not... You get those good driving kicks, those driving sprays, and hopefully your three-point shooters are on point. So that's a potential matchup with the Pacers. See the great six in the chat. Salute. Gamba salute. Marco salute. What do you guys think about a potential uh, Pacers matchup? Leave me some comments in the chat. Leave me some comments in the chat. Knicks versus Pacers. A potential three and to six, three and six seed matchup. That's your most likely scenario right now. Should both teams handle business? That's your most likely scenario. Now, let's look at who who do we want to look at next? The Philadelphia 76ers, shall we? Let's take a look at the Philadelphia 76ers. Now, this Philly team is sitting in seventh in the East, but they've got a big weapon back, and that is the process Joel Embiid. The Sixers 28-7 when Embiid and Maxie play together. They've won six in a row. 13th offense, 11th defense. And this is another scenario where regular season matchups, it's hard to really glean which way a playoff matchup could go because these teams have been very different since then. Yeah, Randall play some games, Randall not play some games, and B play some games, and B not play some games. OG play some, OG not play some. So it's hard to really say how this thing can play out. But obviously with Philadelphia, it's going to start with Joel Embiid. His true shooting percentage, his efficiency in the mid-range is going to be tough for any of these Knicks bigs. Hartenstein, Mitch, it doesn't matter. He's going to be a problem. And he's coming back healthy. He's coming back healthy. So they're going to have to battle with him, keep him off the boards. I think offensively trying to pull him away from the basket will be a key for the Knicks. Or using Utilizing Hartenstein heavy as a hub, as a playmaker, playing off of Brunson, the two-man game between Brunson and Iheart, pulling Embiid away from the basket and then finding potential cutters, I think that would be ideal for the Knicks. But Philadelphia will be able to match up with the Knicks size-wise when you factor in Tobias Harris and Reed, guys of that nature. You know, Philadelphia will have the depth. 
they will have the depth. And Oubre and Heald and all of those guys. So, you know, when even B comes back and you allow these guys in Philly to go back into their roles, I think they're going to be a tough team. And that's indicative of that six-game winning streak. It's all about how you play going into the playoffs. And Philadelphia is playing very well. They're playing very, very well. But I still think uh, Brunson, uh, matchups-wise, they have nothing for him to stop him. For the Knicks, it's going to be, can they control the glass, limit the MB damage, play faster, especially when he's out there, and be able to create some good three-point looks when it's available. I still like our chances, even if he's back playing at an MVP level, which he is. I still like the Knicks' chances in this series. I, I don't I don't see any matchup in this first round where you say Knicks are in trouble, per se. Especially with the way these squads are looking. J.P. Martin in the chat. Playoff MB puts no fear in my heart. I feel you, man. Good stuff. Let's go. CP the Franchise on the Bleacher Report app. We are breaking down. The Knicks potential playoff scenarios. Let me know what you guys think in the chat. Share this uh, video. Share the link on the chat. So to everybody tapping in on Bleacher Report. We switched up the look a little bit. You know, before I was doing the solo dolo camera. Then we figured out how to integrate our normal show overlay, which I love, which I'm very much used to. So it's kind of just uh, kind of just working through the kinks. So we talk Pacers. We talk Philly. How about the Orlando Magic? How about the Orlando Magic, another team who won the season series against the Knicks. They did do that. They won the season series against the Knicks. But another team where it's hard to say what will happen here because they're two different teams. Uh, The Knicks are a different team since they last saw them. In the four games that they played Orlando, you had, again, some with no OG. One with no Brunson. And in those three losses to Orlando, the Knicks shot 41% from the field. So give credit to the Magic defense because I think that is where they will be tough. They're versatile. They're young. They scrap. They're athletic. They have the size. They Of these teams, they have the size to compete with the Knicks. They have different guys that they can throw at you from Paolo to Wendell Carter, to Isaac, to Mo Wagner. They've got the size that they can throw at you. So it'll be a little bit difficult for the Knicks, especially for Brunson in having to deal with some of their scrappier guards, Anthony Black, Jalen Suggs. You know, it could it could be they've they've made it difficult for him over the course of the over the course of the regular season. But the Knicks did find something in their last matchup, running the Magic out the gym 98-74, to 74, and that is with their physicality. Jamal Mosley talked about it. This is a potential playoff matchup, and I agree there. And even in that matchup, uh, they didn't even see OG in that matchup. So that's what I mean. You know, you put OG out there to limit Paolo, and even though Franz isn't having the ideal third year that you want him, wanted him to have, I like our chances there. But, you know, they are kind of the anti-Pacers where, you know, the Pacers, you should, you'll, be at, you'll be able to have your opportunities inside. Against Orlando, it's going to be a little tougher. It's going to be a little tougher. They swarm, they switch, they can play big. So for the Knicks... This is where you're going to have to knock down your, your outside shots. Hart, DiVincenzo, OG, McBride. You're going to have to shoot well to beat this team. But overall, I think the Knicks should be all right. They should be fine against this team. I'm very intrigued, though, just as a basketball fan. I think Paolo, playoff Paolo is something that I'm very interested in seeing. Who is he in the playoffs? That's the next step in his evolution. He's having an outstanding second year. How will he make this team better? A team that's looking for more offensive output, some more punch. He's going to have a lot on his shoulders to make them better, and I think Tibbs is going to put him to the test. So let's see how he fares. He's going to have to pass 
the Thibodeau test. So that's Orlando. And just in terms of overall where they are right now, Orlando is 22nd in offense, 3rd in in defense. 22nd in offense, 3rd in defense. So, you know, the Knicks should be able to muddy it up against this team. And if it comes down to close games, I like their chances, their experience, and their overall talent level to get them through. I can see the Knicks winning this in, in five, six games. What do you guys think in the chat, man? Gamma in the chat has seen that OG Paolo matchup. Yep. You got OG Paolo, OG Siakam, OG Halliburton, OG Maxi. Let's do it. We got the dog. That's a difference maker. How about the Milwaukee Bucks, who the Knicks just saw? How about the Milwaukee Bucks, man? Knicks able to make that season series a little bit interesting. With the Bucks having won the first three, the Knicks finished off with the last two. And uh, a big one on Sunday. Damn, they're running the Bucks out the gym in the second half. A full squad effort led by Jalen Brunson and his 43 points. What a performance by the Knicks. And, you know, this this Bucks team is reeling, man. This is another team that I'm really not all that concerned with, to be honest with you. Because defensively, they're just not as stout as they used to be. Yes, Giannis is going to be a lot to contend with. Now, with the calf, that could change everything. He, he picked the wrong time to get injured. A Camp Poverde, salute, salute, says, what's up, KFTV fam, salute. Uh, Giannis picked the wrong time to get hurt, guys. But nevertheless, he can still be a two-way force. You still have to respect the star power of Giannis and Dame. That is why they've, even despite all the issues, the coaching changes, whatnot, still a top five offense in the NBA. And when they hit their strides, it'll be tough for the Knicks to keep up with. Now, Middleton is another big question mark for them. Who will he be in the playoffs? I don't see Chris Middleton becoming, like, like going back to peak all-star for Middleton. I just think the injuries have derailed him. This team is a different team. I think that's part of their struggles. I don't see him coming through and delivering for them and being a consistent number two and number three guy when they need him to. I also don't think the Bucs have the depth like they used to. They don't have a guy off the bench that, you know, you really have to be concerned with. Yeah, a couple of guys can shoot here and there. Green can shoot. You know, Connaughton can shoot. Not worried about Crowder. Bobby Portis. Yes, you do have to worry about Bobby Portis. And there's another team that can match the Knicks size for size. So controlling the glass for the Knicks is going to be key there. And then on the other end, just exposing their their lack of perimeter defense. Exposing them and finding those outlets for three when you have the ability to drive and spray, drive and kick. I think the Knicks can be fine. We'll be fine against Milwaukee should they see them in a potential matchup. And you just never know because Milwaukee's in second. They can drop. They can drop to four. They can drop to five. You just don't know right now. So I wouldn't count out this potential matchup in the first round. But what we've seen, especially from these last two matchups, was these two teams, the Knicks can beat them. And I think what was alarming to me is that at a time like now, in April, you have Doc Rivers calling out the team's mental toughness. He's calling out their ability to close games. They're having internal team meetings meetings in April. And he he waved the right flag in this Knicks game when they had a chance to potentially come back into the game. I thought that was very interesting. So this seems to be their, you know, when you talk about teams playing their best basketball at this point of the season, it ain't the Milwaukee Bucks. It is not the Milwaukee Bucks. 
So something to uh, to take a look at. But I like the Knicks' chances. Salute to everybody in the chat. CP the franchise on the Bleacher Report app. Rocking with you guys here. Knicks and Celtics tomorrow night. Tonight on Knicks Fan TV, we will have our game of the week preview. So make sure that you guys tap into that. We'll be previewing, taking a look at where these two teams are headed as they look towards the postseason. Thursday, we will have our play-by-play show hosted by JD Sports Talk. And then our post-game show, number one show for the fans by the fans, post-game live, will be live and direct after the game. So make sure you guys tap into that. Go get your playoff merch, guys. The merch is flying off the shelf. And if you want your merch by game one, I suggest you order it between today, tomorrow, the latest. Order, order, order. Because we want to make sure that you guys are getting it by the game. Now, we will have more available. If you don't, we will have more uh, at our watch parties as well. And more details will come up, come about. But make sure you guys are um, are getting your merch. Shout out to Ant and J25. Nick says, hat is fire. He appreciate it. He says, if we play our game, we can beat anybody. Yeah, that that's basically the gist of this. You know what I'm saying? Basically the gist of it. I, I think every team, including the Knicks, have their weaknesses here. But for the Knicks, I continue to say their defense, their rebounding, and the star power of Brunson is a good enough combination to get it done, especially in this early round. And look at Cleveland. I mean, we want to talk about the Cleveland Cavaliers. The Cleveland Cavaliers who... Have been reeling. Who just who are they? I mean, they've you know the Knicks have had the injury bug. Cleveland seems like they've had the injury bug all year. It was Mobley. It was Garland. It's been Donovan Mitchell. Nevertheless, this Knicks team has owned Cleveland over the last two years, and I don't see that changing anytime soon. The Knicks are tougher. They're more physical. And I think they have the mental edge over this Cleveland team. The coaching edge as well. Yeah. Well, shout out Tom Thibodeau. I think the Knicks have the coaching edge as well over the Cleveland Cavaliers. I'm really, this is, this of all those teams, this is the last team I'm worried about here in a first round matchup. I like how the Knicks match up. I think they'll be able to out rebound this Cleveland team. They will be more physical. There's not a single person on this team that can see Jalen Brunson one on one defensively. And 25 Knicks, Cleveland softer than Chinchilla. <laughs> Facts. Facts. I just don't see it. And they, the Knicks are in their heads. Pause. They are concerned. They're worried. So I don't think the Knicks will have any problem with this team. This could be a sweep or a gentleman sweep. And I don't even think I'm looking at it overconfidently. I, I just think the Knicks are that much better than this Cleveland team. And with the Mitchell situation, how's his knee? Yeah, the nasal surgery. He's in, he's out, he needs rest. Is that? I think that even more so will throw off their mojo. So I'm really not worried about Cleveland either. I think the Knicks come and play their A game, get after it on the boards, get Brunson unleashed. You got Hart out there. You know, Josh Hart. Being that jack of all trades, I don't see how Cleveland slows these guys down. But that's just me. What do you guys think in the chat, man? Leave some comments in the chat. Who's to everybody on the Bleacher Report app. CP the franchise here in the building. The final countdown, guys. There's three games left for the New York Knicks in the regular season, man. How quick did the season go, man? I felt like last day I was in Cleveland, you know, scarfing down terrible stale pizza at 1 o'clock in the morning doing post-game shows. And now we back at it. We could potentially be going back to Cleveland. I got to make sure uh, I pack me some peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. Ant New Jersey 25 says, we supposed to worry about Niang and his beer belly? Ain't nobody worried about the minivan. Nobody's worried about the minivan. Yeah, we'll be fine, man. 
If you guys in the chat have any more questions, uh, throw it in the chat before we wrap up. CP the Franchise here on the Bleacher Report app. Beautiful Wednesday here in New York. Orange and blue skies everywhere, wherever you, you Knicks fans are. Yeah, it's money time. It is money time, guys. We are ready. Acam Proverde, salute. He says, if our defense can keep, keep us in it, we will always have a chance. That's a fact. And that is where the OG factor is looming large. The dog is getting ready to be unleashed. Every time he's in the game, we win. We win. I mean, where's his overall plus minus now? Who knows? I, I got to look that up. Where is OG's uh, uh, plus minus at right now? Let's see. When, when was that trade? Since, let's see, since January. I'm on Stat Muse right now. Since January 1st, 2024. Top 10 plus minus in the NBA since January 2024. It says Jalen Brunson. Jalen Brunson as a top, the best plus minus in the NBA since the start of the year at 445. I'll, I'll show it to you guys right now. Stat Muse. And OG's at plus 321. Well, let's, let's show it to you guys right here. Jalen Brunson, 445, highest plus minus in the NBA since the start of the year. iHeart, 326. iHeart's in uh, fifth. And OG's in sixth with a plus 321. These are your impact players, man. Josh Hart's on this list. These are your impact players. I'm looking for a big playoff series, a big playoff run. From iHeart. I'm looking for a big playoff run from iHeart. Go get that money. It's money time for iHeart too. Contract year. Go get it. And, and, and tell the Knicks they got to pay up. Cut the check. Got to utilize iHeart as a spoke. As a hub. Utilize his playmaking. His defense. His hustle. His, he's going to be another key guy for us. He's going to be another key guy. Gambit says, watch parties on the way. Yes, watch party details are in the process of being finalized for my New Yorkers, for my out-of-towners. Come out. Come on out. Ain't a watch party better than a Knicks fan TV watch party. I can guarantee you that. You're going to have a great time. Live music during commercials. During the game, we get it popping. We're playing it. We're piping the game audio all throughout the venue. We lock it in. Ain't no distractions when the game, when, when the ball's in play and the game is on. Commercials is party time. You get your music, you get your food. We're gonna be doing uh, uh, wing specials, food specials, all the whole nine yards, man. A franchise party, a KFTV party, is a family show, and a good time is guaranteed to be had by all. So stay tuned because we got a lot going on, a lot to do, and I'm very much looking forward to it, man. So for everybody tapping in on the Bleacher Report app. Salute, salute, salute once again. Make sure you follow us over on YouTube, youtube.com slash KnicksFanTV. Follow us on social media, at KnicksFanTV on every platform, at CP the franchise on every platform. No R, for the fans, by the fans. Very easy to remember. If you see anybody botching my name, you be sure to correct them. I, I deputize you to go out there and defend my name. But salute, man. Appreciate everybody for the support. As usual, man, like this video, hit the fire emoji on, on Bleach Report, and share it. And we'll see you guys soon, man. Playoff time, the final countdown. Let's go, Knicks, baby. Orange and blue skies. Franchise, I'm out of here. Salute, guys. Great show.